My view is that uh, state law should never claim to be Sharia. It is secular and should be acknowledged as secular. Because in that way, we can debate it, we can change it without having to run against people's religious convictions because they are not implicated in making law. Uh, therefore, Sharia, for me, is not to be enforced by the state. The value of Sharia, say, take Sharia to mean the normative system of Islam, the totality of the obligation of a Muslim. That is, uh, by its nature, its value in its being practiced out of conviction voluntarily. Hmm. Whereas when it comes into state institutions, it becomes coercively enforced. So therefore it loses its religious value and its religious nature. It becomes implicated. And, and we know the state is not something to be trusted or taken to be always uh, sort of benign. And uh, states can be extremely oppressive. Therefore, I, I worry about Sharia being sort of claimed to be enforced by the state, because the state can be a very coercive um, and authoritarian institution. My point here is, if we mean by Sharia, and this is the only meaning that I accept, mm -hmm. is a way towards faithfulness and telling us some principles and objectives, that's it. Everything which is going to come as laws are going to come from a human product, a human endeavor, and a human construction. So for me, is when people are saying, you know, Sharia is our reference, our inspiration, even here I'm saying, okay, that's fine. Tell me which kind of inspiration. Inspiration of laws or inspiration of objectives? Because if it's laws that it's built and that's it, it's not going to work because you are imposing. It's, it's uh, the fastest way towards the the theocracy, not democracy. But if you mean by Sharia, and this is why I'm, I'm challenging this, for example, uh, when the people are saying in Egypt now there is a big discussion, what do you mean by this reference to Sharia? And the Coptic uh, citizens are right by asking, does it mean that we are going to have the same rights and the same duties and we are free? If this is what you mean, that's fine. If it's not what you mean, it means that we, have, we are going to have a reference to Sharia which is uh, going to uh, privilege the Muslims and not the other citizens. So we have, we'll have second class citizenship and they are right to ask the question. But this is where my point is to come to the definition of Sharia to be consistent with what I was saying at mm. the beginning. Mm -hmm. Now, for example, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, a, a European citizen. I'm a mm. Swiss citizen. And when I'm saying to people, for example, look, in Switzerland, you know, the fact that all the citizens are treated the same way before law, Christians, Muslims, or atheists, or agnostics, or whatever, in principle, this is what is said in the law. This is my Sharia. But Tarek, the very fact that Sharia is mentioned in the Constitution and that Islam is said to be the religion of the state, that fact itself is already making a distinction between Copts and Muslims. So why mention Islam and Sharia and not mention Christianity and Coptic? Uh, it depends. It depends. How do you understand Sharia? Because no, but, I, I wouldn't, I but wouldn't why say mention that. It? But why mention it? But yes, but the point is that if you go yourself now in Muslim-majority countries and you speak about the secular system, the way you speak about it is too loaded historically to be understood. You are not going to be followed by 95% of the Muslims around the world. Because the way you are using it, but, but and this is what... This is why, let me just finish on this. Uh, this is why, for, for example, when we have now people saying, we need a civil state. I say, okay, go for a civil state. When we have, we, we are distinguishing the authorities, the religious authorities and the state authority. I want this. Now the way it's going to be constructed is not by in exporting the Western model there. It's not going to be followed at all. And yes, even the yeah. terminology. So when, for example, I'm saying, if you mean by the reference to Sharia for a Muslim majority country, for a Muslim majority country, that the Sharia is telling you that you are not going to make a difference in anything which has to do with laws and rights between Christians and, and, and Jews and, and atheists and Muslims. If this is the point, I prefer to be critical as to the substance of the word than to avoid mentioning it. Because when you avoid mentioning it, it's not going to be followed no, by but, Muslims. But, but the problem is that when you when you mention it in the Constitution, if it's not going to make any difference, why mention it? So the point that is... It's not going to make a difference. It, 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 it's a huge difference. It's a huge difference. What is the difference? It's for the Muslims to understand that it's in the name of their fundamental reference that you have to, to respect all But how about the Copts? It's exactly what I'm saying. No, but, no, but, but the, 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 what I'm saying is that you cannot say that mentioning Sharia in the Constitution 
is not going to make it, uh, uh, to lead to a discrimination between Copts and Muslims. If it is not going to mean that or have that implication, why mention it? Because, because two things. First, I'm not obsessed with this mention. I don't want the symbols of it. I think that you can avoid it or put it. But now, if someone is going to put it, or if there are trends, a majority trends are saying, we want it to be mentioned. The first thing for me is not to say the only fact that you are mentioning is going to promote discriminations. I want to discuss and to question the substance of the word and the concept. But, but now, now, no. now, the point is that when you are having people, why do you mention it which is not going to make a difference between you and, 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 uh, and, and Coptic citizens, for example? This is exactly where we are, what we are talking about. You can't in Muslim majority country, in Muslim majority country, try to get the people to follow a political project if they have the feeling that this political and social project is at odd with their reference. I would prefer, and this is my position <coughs> and the difference between you and me, is to make it clear that this reference is imposing onto you equality of all the citizens, whatever is their religion. I want them to understand that it's in the name of Islam and not by avoiding the concept. No, but, but uh, for, for one thing, when we talk about Muslim majority countries, there is Senegal, there is Mali, there is Gambia. All these countries are Muslim majority countries and explicitly constitutionally secular. Yes. Indonesia is secular. Muslims in India, who are the second largest population of Muslims in the world, live in a secular state. Yes. So I don't accept that Muslims are going to reject a secular state simply because it's called a secular state. It's not I the same history. No, we are no. talking about Muslim. We are talking about Arabs, and we are talking about societies that were facing colonialism. But, uh, but Arab are 12, to Arabs are twelve percent of the total Muslim population of the world. No, but we are talking about this now. No, no, now, no, now. no. I'm not. I'm talking about the totality of Muslims, yes. including those like myself who live in the United States. The point for me is that whether I live in a majority or a minority yes. situation. Yes is immaterial. The point is that the Sharia has, no, the state has nothing to do with Sharia. It is not the business of but the state. But once again, it means that you are accepting no. the, the, wait, the, wait, the wait. very narrow understanding no, 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 of Sharia. No, no, no. Sharia is. The point is whatever, that whatever you understand the term to mean, unless it's totally meaningless. If it's meaningless, why mention it? If it it's, has it's a very, meaning. It's very meaningful. But, but the, the, meaning, the meaning, as we understand it, historically established, uh, when you say, I want to contest the content, but no, the, content, the yeah. content that we know that exists as we understand it makes a distinction between Christians and Muslims. But, but what is the point for you then? All your work that you are doing on, for example, coming back to the scriptural sources, saying the message in Mecca and the message, you, what you are for doing. For the community. No, no, but no. this is what you are doing. You are doing this. And then you jump into something else and say, I'm separating because this is your definition. You're not going to work the, like that. The one I am doing... There is a, a, a contradiction is, in methodology. No, I don't think Tarek. Uh, the, the transformation of our understanding of Sharia that I mean is for the community to live with or by, not for the state to enforce. So I'm saying but, that... But, but the, community the, is, the community is yeah. electing the state, is electing the government, is electing... It's going to have an impact on that. So we better go no, for something which is a critical take on the whole uh, reference and to say this is what it means. And what I'm saying is that is in the name of Sharia that you have to construct a legal system not differentiating between any citizens. This is in the name of your religion. But, but this is much more powerful in Muslim majority countries than what you are but proposing. But it, it is not that it is not don't that you understand. think so? No, I don't think so because the point is that the understanding of Sharia that people have is not the understanding that you are, you are, you are presenting. But don't you have to change that? Oh, oh, that but, we don't want to, to, but to, to until tackle you, this? But until you do, until you do, when you bring it into the, the constitution, what is going to import is not your understanding, but the existing current understanding. On the Hudud, my position is this, that we are not, we today, Muslims, where we live and share the state with others, are not the intended addressees by that command. Uh, it, it was a command that was addressed to the believers as believers and only as believers. But it cannot today uh, unfold in a reality where Muslims are sharing the state with all different points of view. So therefore, for me, hudud are not to be enforced by the state. And in fact, they are not to be enforced by a human institution. They are too precise for application by a human institution. And that all law is secular. 
and therefore must be a product of civic reason, of civic discourse. And that's part of the reason why I'm resisting the idea of immutability. So that if you want to propose a law, defend it and explain it in a way that does not invoke religious authority uh, to say this is the way it's going to be because God said so. Uh, the point is that for me, a crime is not a sin. Uh, the same conduct could be a crime and a sin, but it is not the same. So uh, it is not sin because it's a crime and it's not a crime because it's a sin. There are two different types of authority, religious authority versus political authority. And in that sense, for me, hudud would not be applied because they are not for a human institution to enforce. Uh, that's my position. My position on this, it's, it's, it's to be very, very clear on, once again, what I said at the beginning of our discussion is that Sharia and even all the rules are humanly extracted, but there are difference of level. There is a hierarchy, and even in rationality, legal rationality, there are differences in levels. We have to admit this. So the point for me is to say to the Muslims today, yes, in the texts, in the Quran, we have texts dealing with uh, poor corporal punishment and death penalty. And in the prophetic tradition, we have two or three texts uh, uh, referring to stoning. Now, these texts are here. Our intellectual understanding and understanding of these texts should be based not only on the literal meaning of the text, but the very essence of the Quranic objective. And this is where we don't agree. Mm. And this is where there is something which is important for me. It's not against Islam or to forget the text that I don't want them to be implemented. It's in the name of the objective of this text. It's what you did or what you said at the beginning, the, the, the Meccan message is telling us something and there was a practical translation for this specific time. This is the, 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 the difference between the two, the two uh, uh, messages and the two periods of time. Mm. Now, I'm dealing with texts that are clear cut as to the literal meaning. Mm -hmm. Cut the hands of the thief, men and women. It's said, now I can't just take this and say I'm going to implement this. This is my faithfulness to the text. You are faithful to the text when you understand the objectives of the text. And the objective of the text are justice, are uh, uh, respect of human beings, and, and no torture, and all, all this, the, the, the dimension of the the dig mm. dignity. And I think that it's in the name of the objectives. And then, because all the conditions to implement literally these texts are not there, that what we have today, it's a complete betrayal of the objectives of the text. So it's not implementable. So we have to stop implementing. So look, the difference between, I'm not talking to Muslims from my own rationality. I'm talking to Muslims in the name of Islam, saying them this text, the Quran and the prophetic tradition, are making it impossible to implement this text because the objectives are betrayed. We are here today in Istanbul. Mm. The, the people who are running this country, at the beginning of their uh, uh, Islamic journey, they were referring to Sharia as the reference. Now they are saying that the democratic system, the system that they have in this society, is not at odds with the, the, their understanding of Sharia. I think that we may agree or not, we may say anything and critical to, towards the government, and you should be, of course. Mm. This is the only way to be, to be loyal to your principles, is to look at what is happening now, even in Istanbul mm. or in, in Turkey. But their evolution is making people move from a very narrow understanding of the Sharia reference to something which is open to a better understanding. But you know, in, Tur in Turkey, this happened because the constitution specifies that state is secular. No, no, it's not no, because uh, of that. It's, no, because, it's because, because of the, the army. No, 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 it's because of the army. No, no, they have no, no, no choice. No, 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 they do have a choice. I think they do <laughs> have a choice. <laughs> but the point is that the point is that the constitutional structure of a secular state is what brought the Islamists to an understanding and acceptance of that. It was not that they came to power and they prescribed the secular state. They had to live with the secular state already established. No, but, but the point I'm saying also that is, is in terms of the West and the anxiety about Sharia, if we make it clear that Sharia is never for the state to enforce, it is for people who accept it to live by it. 
in private individually, but not for the state to enforce. I think this will take away a major element of anxiety and hostility. And what the, 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 point, the point is this one. This is where exactly we are, you and me. Mm. Talking to the West, we want to remove anxiety. Talking to Muslims and to Muslim majority country, we want to get a sense of consistency, well-being and openness. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not sure today that you will get any ears in the uh, Muslim majority countries by trying to please the West. No, no it is not pleasing. I, no, no, not, not pleasing, pleasing. Or, or to get them, to get no, no, this no, anxiety. No, no, no. The point is, for me, really it's this, is how could we today make the Muslims living with that reference, understanding, having a better and in-depth thorough understanding of the reference and at the same time uh, being no, but, 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 uh, Tarek, creating a society uh, uh, where the people are... I, I don't think my position is pleasing the West because I'm saying the same thing whether I'm saying it in Cairo or in Indonesia or in Washington. It is the same point. I, I'm saying whether Muslims are majority or minority, Sharia is not to be enforced by the state. So by being consistent in the message I'm, I'm, give, I'm giving actually, I'm, I'm not, and again to say that 20 million Muslims live in Europe. So it is not it is not an it's not a trivial matter. It is it is a matter of fundamental concern for the Muslims who live in Europe as well as for other Europeans. So the what what is the most powerful position? When, for example, I'm not I'm not going to you know it's implemented by the state or not. And even when you talk about the constitution, it's not because it's in the constitution that is going to be implemented by the state. The 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 the, the, the guardian of the constitution could be the state, but what is going to be implemented? It's up to the dynamic politics and, and the majority the majority rule and the rule of and the will of the majority. Now the position for me is when I'm saying to Muslims, Western Muslims, you know what? Mm. You are a citizen and you have to be in, implemented uh, you be involved in this society. You have to get uh, an ethics of citizenship, which is not only citizenship and ethics towards mm. your duties and your contribution, not only to, towards your rights. And to respect the law of the country. It's in fact the right way to understand your Sharia. Mm -hmm. It's much more powerful for them to get, oh, I'm not at odds with my reference, but this is the essence of my reference. This is powerful. This is make them feel that they are at the same time fully Muslims and fully Western. But, but it is a logic of a state of exception. Why? Because, it is, because, because we are a minority, we have to live with this. But if yeah. we are a majority, or if we come to political power, we are going to change again. No, who said uh, that? No, because because you are saying that because you are you live in Europe. Th this is a, I'm saying exactly the opposite. I am contesting anything which has to do with minority citizenship. Absolutely. Okay, in that, there is on that we agree. On that we agree completely. Because so I, 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 with something on which we agree. Yes, we do. <laughs> actually we have more. But <coughs> on this point, my position is clearly to say. Muslims, wherever they are, should move away from minority politics completely. Yeah, I completely agree and and that. that we are just simply uh, citizens who are Muslims. And we should, our relationship to the state should be a matter of our citizenship, not a matter of I our agree relationship. With that. That's great. But, but also to say that uh, we have to be concerned about what's happening in Muslim majority countries too. Because, uh, and I think that there is, uh, uh, you know, the notion of minority fiqh, the, the so called sharia of the minority or understanding of fiqh uh, al I, I think it is a misnomer and it's a dangerous proposition because it has to be consistent with the totality of Muslim jurisprudence. It cannot be exceptional. Mm. Uh, and it does not have legitimacy if it's exceptional. Mm. So if it has to be consistent with the totality, therefore we have to revisit the fundamentals of that jurisprudence. It's methodology, usul mm. al-fiqh. Mm. We have to question usul al-fiqh and we have to revisit that. But this is exactly what I'm trying to do in uh, uh, radical reform. It's exactly to come to the usul al-fiqh. And, and I, I am like you, I'm quite critical about anything which has to do with fiqh al mm. I said uh, the fiqh of minority is about a step. We have to go beyond that. And I, I don't like even uh, the, the objectives of it. 